Depression. It takes over our lives, our mental and our physical. Sometimes we don't even know that we are experiencing depression. Today I have the pleasure to share a beautiful story by someone who is currently going through depression. Maybe her story can inspire you, uplift you, and motivate you. Talks with Steph segment was created to share stories around the world. So I hope that you guys listen to her story, share it with someone else who is currently going through something maybe as similar as hers. So until the next story, guys, stay tuned and enjoy. My name is Bianca and I'm 27 years old. I first started feeling my depression after I lost my grandmother. That was in 2015, the week before Christmas. I I dealt with it by drinking. That was my story. I was drinking a lot, got a DUI, locked up, came home, and that right there was like, okay, you need to get yourself together. After that thing started, I went and talked to somebody. It didn't really help. It was just more or less depressing feelings. And then in 2016, I met Nick. And we, we was good. Like, everything, was, everything started off good. We got engaged, got pregnant. And then June 28, 2018, he got hit off his bike and he died. And everything went downhill for me. I ain't wanna be around nobody. I ain't wanna get out of bed, talk to nobody. I was just mad all the time. I felt abandoned. Like, why did everything start going so good and then it was all just snatched away? A month later, I had our son, <laughs> Kaysen, and I didn't deal with that pretty good. I still don't. Two weeks after the case and I was out drinking and partying, like it was 2015 with my grandma. I calmed down, I started smoking weed. I never went and talked to nobody. It was just, instead of me drinking, I turned to weed. That's, that was just it. I talked to his mother, me and her, we still feel the same. I don't think I ever really fully, not got over it, but accepted it. Because I still don't accept it. I still don't believe it. It's like, he just went away. We was in, I was happy, we was getting married. Like, we had kids, we, we planned everything. Like, and then it was like, all right, you got to start all over again. Like. Everything that she was working towards, building towards, it was all just ripped away. I was living at his mother's house with my two kids. They weren't her, they weren't her grandkids. She could have put us out. She didn't. She let us stay there until I got back on my feet and I was able to move out on my own. Moved out on my own and it still wasn't no easier because it's still like this is everything that we plan to do. All of our plans and dreams, we planned on doing, and I was doing. I'm doing it alone, so I don't really think I I dealt with it yet. I haven't got past the anger stage yet. I fuss at him all the time, all the all the time. <laughs> like it's bad, but I haven't dealt with it. So I haven't even got out of the depression stage yet. Cause it's still days where I don't want to get out of bed. Or I don't do anything at all. I just sit in the house. It's days where I wake up and I have an attitude. I'm mad at the world. Honestly, I just take it day by day. I look at it as, I'm not gonna say I don't have time to focus on me because I'm doing too much, but I have three kids that I have to worry about and I feel like if they're okay I'm okay so I guess I still I don't deal with the feelings I suppress them if that makes sense like this really like the first time that I'm sitting talking about it like this other than to his mother I would tell other people 
not go talk to a psychiatrist per se, but talk to somebody, let it out how you feel. Because I know a lot of these. I'm angry. I am very angry. And I take that out on people around me. You really think so? Like, just let it out. Don't keep it in because you can't do it by yourself. Like, at first, I just felt like I was never, ever going to deal with nobody else. Like, oh, you that was just that? like the end for me. Like, I was just like, oh, I'm not doing it. Like, I went and got my tubes tied. Like, I was like, that, that's it for me. Like, I mean it. He was like, you know, we had that talk. Like, if something ever happened to me, you can't have kids with nobody else. And I'm not gonna say I don't regret it because I, I didn't, I didn't want a lot of kids. Like, I felt like three was enough for me. <laughs> but that's just me. Like, <laughs> I went, yeah. Like, I, I didn't. I don't think I overreacted, but I felt like I should have actually sat down and talked about how I felt instead of trying to deal with it on my own. And like, he deal with a lot of shit. Like, <laughs> this man, he deals with a lot of shit for me. Like, I, he knows Nick's mother. He, we go out to dinner. We go to the stores together. Like, he's a, we are actually one big blended family. But when I tell y'all, like, I give this man the blues, if I was him, I would be like, look, I'm done. Like, I cannot do this. You are, you are fucking nuts. Like, one minute I'm okay, the next minute I'm cussing him out. Then the next minute I'm all up under him. Like, I don't see how he do it. But I appreciate him so much. He puts up with a lot. Not even just, he deal with my three kids, my situation. I cry, cuss him out. And it's not even his fault. And he just, him fuss back with me. It's not a, it's never a battle. Like he lets me get it off and then it's just like, we back to normal. <laughs> and the little bit stuff set me off like, oh, you ain't get my, the right sauce for, for my food. Like anything will set me off. Like, but he support me. Like, I was like, oh, I'm about to go do this. And it might not be the best thing to do. And he'll still be like, well, I'm going with you just, just, just so you don't get in trouble. Like, that's really like, my partner in crime, like, we've known each other for a long time, but it's now, it's like, you see him, you see me. All right, right, like, well, where is he when they see me? And I'm like, oh, he over there. But I feel like, yeah, he deal with a lot of shit. Mm, thank you. Thank you. Because <laughs> I would have been like, look, bitch. You mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. his side, cause he probably was like eighty days. I want to pull my damn hair out, beat my ass, but he just be like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> it is. But yeah, he's awesome. Thank you. <laughs>